And again, I'd like to welcome you all to today's advanced training on the iPad keyboard. So all about the keyboard um, today, some history, fun facts, and of course, some demonstrations. I'm going to go ahead and read our disclaimer before we get started. The Wildtech DC Senior iPad program, its owners and presenters offer technical assistance. Virtual health well-being information designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on the information in any applications or topics made by Wildtech, including but not limited to uh, mobile device applications and any social media pages maintained by Wildtech its owners or presenters as a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, treatments, or legal advice. Thank you so much for letting me read the disclaimer. If you cannot see me or hear me or see the screen, please send me a message in the chat and I would really appreciate that. <laughs> um, just as always, you know, just to go over, um, to keep meetings organized and avoid, you know, talking over each other, we, I just ask that you use the raise hand feature. So for those that already know, please raise your hand. But if you don't, if you have a question or a comment or a concern, you can tap more at the top right, and then you'll see the option where it says raise hand. So I want everyone in Zoom to please raise their hand, so that way you can feel confident and empowered and independent to you know, share what you have to say and, you know, to be heard because we want everyone's questions to be answered. And, you know, it really does help out others because we all have different points of view. So your question, you know, all most, if not all the time, really helps me with learning new things, but I know it helps others as well. So, you know, please ask the question if you um, would like to, and we'll go based on the order of the hands. So we have about excuse me 22 folks on and uh thank you um so much for the 13 that have raised their hands uh, more than half i appreciate that um so it again um if you ever have a question or a comment concern reaction anything um i want you to raise your hand in zoom okay so um, again thank you to those that have raised their hands your efforts are not unnoticed you can lower your hand by hitting lower at the bottom. Again, it says your hand is raised and then it will say lower. When you tap lower, that's how you lower your hand. Yeah. So thank you, still got two hands up. So just make sure again at the bottom, if it says your hand is raised, you hit lower once the presenter or the host is uh, has answered your uh, question, okay? So uh, thank you so much. Um, in addition to raising your hand right below that feature, you can send a, uh, a reaction, right? So you can send um, below raise hand, again, you tap more, um, then you'll see like a clap or a thumbs up or a heart or, you know, a laughing emoji or a celebratory one. Or if you tap these three dots right here, you can then access any of Apple's emojis to send as a reaction. So. Again, same thing, I want everyone in Zoom to just send a reaction, again, just to have fun and to, again, utilize uh, what we have in Zoom to make this as much of an immersive experience um, as possible. So uh, thank you for your <laughs> eyes, <laughs> Bridget and Janelle. Uh, those are one of the funniest ones. When my, when my good friend doesn't answer my call, I send her a, those, those eye emojis. <laughs> and I'm like, where are you? Where are you at? <laughs> um, thank you for your uh, heart, Mr. Thompson. Oh, wow. Who has the mic? I know that's right, Brenda. <laughs> As you can see, you can do any emoji and send it as a reaction. So, you know, sending your love or your you know, your claps and your congrats, you know, your thumb, just a thumbs up, you know, and it's a lot of fun. You can see who has sent a reaction and other reactions in the participants menu. So if you want to see other reactions, you can hit participants and you can go through the list and see. So um, thank you so much for that. That was a lot of fun. Last but certainly not least is if you want to communicate with others non-verbally, the chat is a great way to share a greeting, like, Hello, happy Friday. Hope you all have a great three-day weekend. Because yes, Monday is MLK Day as we had uh, went over yesterday. Um, so please, I hope everyone enjoys their uh, three-day weekend. I try to, you know, make this as best I can so we can end our week on a, on a wonderful note. So 
Um, again, uh, you can send a hello. Uh, have a great weekend. Um, hope you have a great day. You can ask your question in the chat. You can send your congrats or, you know, you can encourage others. You can put resources and information, prayers, quotes, you know, um, anything you'd like to share in the chat, um, you can do so. Um, so I see quite a few chats already, even before we uh, got to this slide. So thank you so much for doing that, you all. Um, again, every time you come on to Zoom, you know, if you can, you know, if you have a second, you know, you know, I would send just a, some of hello or hi in the chat. And, uh, you know, you never know whose day it might make. So, um, so yeah, you do that by tapping more than chat the very first option at the top. And then you'll get to this window where you type where it says tap here to chat, and then you send it using the blue button on the right hand side. Um, if you want to send a photo or a, even a video or a file, um, just like Brenda did, good job. You can tap on the plus button right here in Zoom, and then you'll see photo, and then you can even add a photo in the Zoom chat as well. And, you know, it just makes it really fun. So um, I love your cat, <laughs> it's so cute. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just want everyone in Zoom to send a chat, but, you know, if you can, um, when you just hop on, you know, a simple hello is, you know, wonderful. Uh, so, yeah, so I hope everyone has a great weekend and a happy Friday, I'm okay weekend. You know, stay safe, please. <laughs> uh, good Friday. Great morning, yes. So I love it, you know, just by reading it and by you typing it, you know, it, it's putting that out there in the world that we're going to have a good morning and, a, you know, a great weekend because, again, our words, even though we're typing them, are very important and they mean something, right? So every time you say you're going to have a great day, you're more likely to have a great day, right? So, you know, it's also a Kind of a mindset thing but also it's nice to share and and, and chat with your fellow participants right <laughs> so uh the first thing uh so for our agenda today we're going to cover uh what is a keyboard um some history and fun facts of course <laughs> thank you for your picture uh bridget i love it <laughs> uh we'll be covering specifically the ipad keyboard and, you know, just some uh, basics today. Well, not really basics, but just to, you know, really, you know, drill those down so that way we can then, you know, move on to more advanced, but just be just more proficient in um, our typing. And, you know, we all, even myself, you know, always learn or want to learn more about what, you know, I utilize on a daily basis, whether on my phone or my computer or my iPad, you know, um, the keyboard is essential in my life. And, you know, it, it's really good to learn. Uh, last but not least, we'll be, you know, having an overview or discussion or demonstration time and just talk about how proficient typing on a keyboard can positively impact your life. Okay, so again, one, what is a keyboard? Um, so the reason why I'm doing this session, if you saw in our daily emails, is that January 8th, which was just Monday, um, it was World Typing Day. So I um, just wanted to show you all that information. If I go down here, it says uh, Typing Day takes place on January 8th. It was first celebrated in 2011 in commemoration of the Malaysian Speed Typing Contest 2011, <laughs> which broke two records in the Malaysian Book of Records, uh, i.e. the fastest typist and the largest participation for a typing event. This day aims to encourage people to express themselves via written communication. It was co-organized co by the STC Speed Typing Contest team from JCI, the Junior Chamber International Minds and Team TAC, the Typo Auto Corrector. Um, typing Day is held on January 8th every year. Is one week after the new year is a good time to think through and you know write down or type down plans for the year. Uh, a fun fact, the world typing record uh, for typing the English alphabet from A to Z on the keyboard is 1.36 seconds. Isn't that amazing? So someone was on a keyboard and they literally wrote all, the, all letters of the keyboard or the alphabet 
in 1.36 seconds. That's amazing, right? <laughs> so I just wanted to show you all that and the reason why we're doing today's session. Um, next up, we're gonna watch a video on the history of the uh, computer keyboard. So, you know, he used to use a typewriter. Uh, you'll see, you know, how that became the modern day computer keyboard. So I hope you all enjoy. Thanks for watching TechWiki. Click the subscribe button, then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future videos. Inventor Christopher Latham Scholes didn't know it, but his typewriter, the first with a modern layout, would end up being the forerunner to one of the most popular communication tools of the 21st century. Because even though in 1874, a typing device that assigns one letter to each key wasn't exactly the most brilliant idea in history, that title clearly belongs to the cinnamon bun. <laughs> Scholz's typewriter was notable for introducing the now ubiquitous QWERTY layout, which was effective supposedly because it kept letters that were commonly used together away from each other to prevent the mechanical arms of the typewriter from hitting each other and causing jams. Mm. Mm, jam. <laughs> now, of course, E and R are placed together in lots of words, and in fact, the original design had a period where the R key is what? today, but oh whatever the reason for this, QWERTY <laughs> typewriters became very popular, and this keyboard layout, sorry Dvorak fans, remained the standard for the teleprinters that became widespread oh in the early 20th that? century. <laughs> so it wasn't surprising then that when actual computers like the 30-ton ENIAC started mm. popping onto the scene That's in the, the 1940s, these right same wow. teleprinters often ended up getting used for data input with that same QWERTY layout, setting the stage for the now familiar keyboard layout to be integrated into later machines that weighed less than an entire family of elephants. <laughs> in the 1960s, video oh terminals goodness. started becoming popular, and mm -hmm. these typically included keyboards that allowed users to more quickly and easily manipulate data on a screen instead of using cards or paper tape like oh, those yeah. earlier oh, teleprinters that were adapted for use with computers. Although these terminals looked like full-fledged computers, they were usually just a monitor and keyboard combo that had to be plugged into a larger size system. However, since mm. it was much easier to type than operate a computer by flipping a bunch of switches on the front or whatever, most oh, computers goodness. featured keyboards <laughs> of some fashion by the early 1980s. And we even started seeing some of the first ergonomic keyboards in the late 70s, cool. with companies like <laughs> Maltron seriously thinking oh about gosh. the user's comfort in a way that led to some... Just, uh, just take a look at that keyboard for a second. What? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a piece of history right there. If I can read the uh, paper, it says Maltron left, left handed keyboard, PCD Maltron UK 1980. Wow. Mm -mm -mm. That's a piece of history right there, right? Um, very interesting designs. And it was a period of great innovation under the hood, too. Many early keyboards used key switches that were pretty different from what you're probably typing on right now, including ultrasonic switches that actually listened to the different vibration each key would make as it was pressed, and, this one was a bit more common, ones that used magnets that got <laughs> close to a pair of metal pieces, what? causing <laughs> them to come into contact with each other whenever the key was pushed down. These were called reed switches. And while this concept is actually still in use today in applications like switching off a laptop when you close the lid, they proved to be too fragile and inaccurate for keyboards. So a couple of alternative designs quickly replaced reed switches. One was the familiar membrane, which works by placing a metal layer under each key that directly contacts traces on the keyboard's circuit board when a key is pressed down. This design is both inexpensive and resistant to debris, making it very common on cheaper keyboards today. Another wow. was a technology that <laughs> IBM patented in 1978, a spring-loaded key switch called a buckling spring. These puppies also worked by direct contact in that pressing down caused two pieces of metal to touch, 
but they prove to be not only extremely durable, but also a pleasure to type on and subjectively listen to. So while not the yeah, first the, mechanical the switch, <laughs> buckling spring switches gained enormous popularity part. thanks to their inclusion on the Model F keyboard that came with the original IBM PC in 1980, and later the Model M, which is still beloved by keyboard enthusiasts today for its wow. high build quality <laughs> and trademark springy sound. And not to be outdone in the mechanical switch arms race, German manufacturer Cherry started gaining notoriety in the mid-1980s after their switches came installed on some keyboards for the Commodore Amiga and proved to be of better <laughs> quality than a lot of the alternatives. Of course, noisy, heavy mechanical switches aren't always the best solution, which I'm sure you, the viewer, can attest to if you've ever had a roommate typing away on their Cherry Blue keyboard while you're trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so rubber dome keyboards were developed around the same time. These gave the user tactile feedback due to the rubber dome snapping like a suction cup, but they were cheaper and quieter than their spring-loaded counterparts. Rubber domes have become common on chiclet-style keyboards, as well as on laptops in the form of the lower-profile scissor switch variant, which helps yeah, to save space. I use, I use it this trend right towards light, cheap <laughs> keyboards drove much of the evolution of the keyboard for the next decade or two, with IBM having the brilliant idea to cut costs by putting stick-on letters on keycaps in 1985, rather than having a different manufacturing process for every key. Oh my gosh, stick-on. So fast forward to today. Now. And basic <laughs> keyboards are lightweight commodity items that can be easily found for less than 10 bucks. But there's also an enormous variety of other options out there at all price points. Whether you want something tricked out with individual RGB backlighting and macro keys for gaming or productivity, a model with optical switches for fast response times, a trick we actually first saw in the early 1980s, or even a keyboard with no keys at all. <laughs> Just remember, whatever you go with, no there's one thing oh that hasn't gosh. changed over the decades. What can they think of next? Dorito crumbs are still the enemy. FreshBooks is the simple to use accounting. Yeah, so there's some just some history and quite an amusing one, you know, that's for myself. Um, you know, what, what the keyboards used to look like and just thinking about it now, you know, how grateful we are. It's, you know, it's much simpler <laughs> than that. So, uh, you know, just you know, more food for thought and just some uh, history for you all. Um, one fun fact, did you know that six million space bars, you know, the key on the keyboard that provides the space, um, on keyboards around the world are hit every second. So every second, six million space bars are being hit. <laughs> so that's a lot of typing, you all, right? <laughs> Um, next up, again, uh, you know, today we're going to be covering the iPad keyboard. Again, just some keyboard um, basics to go over and utilize on your device. So um, the first thing you should know about the keyboard on your iPad is um, you can, um, instead of having to type, um, you can you actually utilize your voice to dictate text um, on your iPad. Um, you can, by enabling this option, you can also see all the other keyboard settings that are available. And how do you access that? Um, I'm going to show you all. So first, um, if you want to enable dictation or edit any settings for your keyboard, you uh, go to your settings app, of course. And then um, you're going to go to general, okay? And it should already, if, if uh, you know, that's the default option that comes up. So you know, once you're in the general option, um, you see where it says keyboard. So you're gonna go ahead and tap on keyboard, okay? And then when you're in keyboard, you have some different options. So for me, um, at the top, it says I have three keyboards. So two, uh, the minimum is, going to be two because it's going to be English and there's going to be the emoji keyboard. Okay. But I have three because I also have um, a Spanish keyboard. So, you know, as many of you know, I'm learning Spanish. So, you know, I do have that keyboard on my device if I ever want to type, um, you know, with additional Spanish characters that are on that keyboard. So, you know, there's uh, all different types of keyboards, you know, Arabic, Chinese, French, all different types of keyboards. So, 
Um, the only you know difference is a couple of keys and a couple of characters, um, but here you can see your different keyboards. One cool option here is called text replacement. Um, you can instead, uh, if you're typing something, right? Um, so let's say you're you want to write on my way. So in the phrase option on my way, you know, you can use the shortcut right here like this on my way, right? You know, a shortened version. And then when I hit save, I just saved that text replacement. So if I go to um, my notes, we're going to be utilizing notes today. Um, let's write on my way. And look, <laughs> it came up as a shortcut. So I think if you want to, you know, uh, like TTYL, you know, talk to you later, right? <laughs> I can also do that. Save. And then same thing, I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna write TTYL and it's right here. So convenient, right? Um, going back to keyboards and then um, for all the keyboards, you see all these different options and they're pretty self-explanatory if you want to auto capitalize. So um, if you want the first word of every sentence to be you know, automatically capitalized, you have the option on and so forth and so forth. So as you can see, I pretty much have every option on because they are all useful in their own way. Um, so, you know, but I wouldn't worry too much about that section, but um, the, this is where you have the, in module five, we talked about double tapping the space bar that enters a period and then a space. So that um, shortcut is turned on automatically um, through uh, the settings. And then last but not least here, it says enable dictation. Um, make sure that option is turned on. So you can, again, use your voice when typing um, in, instead of the keyboard for whatever reason um, that maybe you just that day you don't feel like physically typing, you can utilize your voice. So once you have that option on, I'm gonna go into my notes and you see at the bottom left on the keyboard next to the emoji key, the one, two, three key is that key that looks like a microphone. So of course I'm utilizing Zoom right now so I cannot um, you know, utilize it while I'm on Zoom, but I can use it on my phone um, and show you the results through um, through Zoom. So let me write, uh, hello, this is Alex Bell, period. How are you today? Thank you so much. Yeah, and on my phone it says, hello, this is Alex Bell. How are you today? Thank you so much. And it's, it's, it's simple. So, you know, it um, doesn't matter what, really what way, you know, whatever works for you, you can use dictation or, you know, you can use the different keys um, on the keyboard. So I just wanted to uh, show you all those settings. And again, I'll put the instructions in the chat on how to access and um, your keyboard settings and specifically how to enable dictation. Okay. Um, the next video, again, is uh, just a general overview of some different keys um, on a keyboard. So it may not specifically be the Apple keyboard, but mo uh, the majority, there's one or two keys that are, of course, akin to this keyboard. But in general, um, the knowledge of just this keyboard will help you with utilizing the iPad keyboard. And um, there'll be some questions at the end. Uh, just uh, for you to, uh, you know, answer and think about, which is fun. So again, make sure you all have your pen and paper to take some notes down if you can. The keyboard and its function. A keyboard is used to enter information on the computer. It is an important part of the computer. It has many keys. Alphabet keys. Alphabet keys have letters A to Z. There are 26 alphabet keys. Using alphabet keys, we can type many words. Mm -hmm. Number keys. Numbers 0 to 9 are present on the number keys. There are 10 number keys. 
they are present above the alphabet keys. Number keys are also found on the right side of the keyboard. This is called the numeric keypad. Using number keys, like we can type you, our age, weight, type height and so in, on. That's using a keypad. <laughs> Special character keys. These keys have different symbols on them, like hash, comma, plus, minus, slash, brace and so on. Spacebar key. There is one spacebar key, and it is the longest key on the keyboard. The space bar key gives space between the words. Caps lock key. There is one caps lock key on the keyboard. The caps lock key is used to type the letters in uppercase. Enter key. There are two enter keys on the keyboard. The enter key when pressed, it moves the cursor to the next line. Mm -hmm, the very next line. Arrow keys. Arrow keys help to move the cursor on the screen. There are four arrow keys on the keyboard. Up arrow key is used to move the cursor up. Down arrow key is used to move the cursor down. Right arrow key is used to move the cursor right. Left arrow key is used to move the cursor left. Delete key. There are two delete keys on the keyboard. The delete key when pressed, it erases the letters to the right side of the cursor. Backspace key. There is one backspace key on the keyboard. The backspace key erases the letters to the left side of the cursor. Okay. You know, the iPad doesn't have a delete button. It has, it has the, the backspace. So there is a difference. It's, you know, when you hear it first, it's like, huh? But... The, the delete button on a regular keyboard. So uh, if you're at the um, if you're at the library and need to use a computer, use use lines on that keyboard. You know, I hope I hope this helps out. You know, one application. But on the iPad keyboard is just the backspace key that we that we know. Um, but on these computer keyboards, there is a delete button where it deletes to the right instead of the left. Modifier keys. There are four modifier keys. So we shift, only have this control, shift key alternate, on our iPad and Windows. Keyboard. A modifier key works in combination with other keys to do various activities. The shift key is used to make capital letters mm -hmm. or to access the punctuation and other symbols on the number keys and other keys. The control key is used in combination with other keys as shortcuts for menu commands. The alternate key also works in combination with other keys, as menu command shortcuts. The Windows key can be used in combination with other keys, to do various things on the desktop. Function keys. <laughs> a function yeah, key is a key on the computer iPad, keyboard, so which causes an operating somewhere, system right? <laughs> to perform certain actions. The function keys are arranged at the top of your keyboard, numbered from F1 to F12. Tab key. The tab key is also called a tabular key. Again, there is one tab on key the on the keyboard. So again, much easier to navigate. The tab key is used <laughs> to move the cursor to the next tab stop. Basically escape an indent. Key. <laughs> the escape key is located in the upper left corner of a computer keyboard. It allows the user to abort, cancel, or close operation. Question time. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna, you know, you all can unmute and let's see if we can uh, just have some fun and and answer these questions. So, uh, oops, my bad, let me go back. The keyboard uh, and its function. Let me go function. back to the questions. Question time. Question time. Okay, which key on the keyboard is the longest key? Who, who knows the answer? Which key on key. the keyboard? Oh, good job, Ann. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's a space bar. So good space job. Bar. Which key? Erase the letters to the left side of the cursor. 
The X. It's K. Delete. So it's the, it's the back space, space. key. So whoever yeah. said the X, you know, on the keyboard, yes, it, it looks like an X. Um, so you're, you're right on that, but it's the back space key, okay? So let's, you know, try to be, you know, more consistent because it can be hard when you say delete, you know, but so that's the back space key. Which key brings the cursor to the next line? So the very next line. Return. Return key. Yep, enter the enter key. key. Yeah, return. Pre- Sorry about that. You all the the enter key, the return key. Yep. Yeah. Good job. Anytime you want to go to the next line, you have to hit the enter key to go to the next line. Which key helps to type the letters in capital? The arrow, the up arrow. <laughs> Caps lock. The shift key. No. Yeah. So, so, okay, so the, the video, it, 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 it could be a combination. So on regular keyboards, yes, the caps lock. And, but on our, you know, on our iPad keyboard, yes, we have the shift key, the up arrow. That's how you can type capital letters um, on your iPad. So, you know, you're, mm-hmm. you are all right. So good job. Which key gives space between words? Space bar. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, good job. How many arrow keys are there on a, on a regular keyboard? Four. Four. Mm-hmm. How many alphabet keys are there on the keyboard? Twenty-six. Twenty-six. Four. Mm-hmm. Good job. How many enter keys are there on the keyboard? Two. One. Two. Two. Two on, on on the again the regular keyboard. You know, on our iPad keyboard is just one, but on the regular keyboard it, it is it, it is two. Okay, <laughs> so okay. good job. Okay. Cool. Yeah. How many es- well escape keys? How many escape keys are on the keyboard? One. Um, one. I don't have a keyboard. One. Mm-hmm. And name a modif one or more modifier keys on the keyboard. Who remembers the some of the modifier keys? Gift. Yeah, shift, control, alt, and the you know those Windows keys. Those are all considered to be modifier keys. So again, we on our iPad we only have the shift key. But yes, that is a modifier key because it modifies the another uh, key on the keyboard, right? Yeah. What? So th- thanks so much uh, for participating. That was I, when I saw that I was like, oh, this will be fun. So you all did pretty good. So that makes me happy. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for participating, and I hope you all enjoyed. That. Um, next up. Um, as again, this video is from um, module five, uh, but I, you know, thought it would be good just to again just look directly on this iPad keyboard to see the different keys that are on it. And then since we just watched that video on the computer keyboard, when watching this, you know, uh, I know I appreciate how simple you know it is compared to you know a regular uh, computer keyboard. In this lesson, we'll be learning how to use the keyboard on an Apple touchscreen so, device. You know, just a little bit of review, y'all. Let's begin mm-hmm. by tapping Notes to open the Notes app. The keyboard is a part of the touch screen. The keyboard appears when you need to type. During this lesson, we recommend that you hold your device sideways for a bigger keyboard. The layout of the keys should look familiar to you. The space bar is in its usual place at the bottom of the keyboard. You tap the X symbol in the top right to backspace or delete, just like on a physical keyboard. But because of the screen size, all of the keys cannot be shown at once. Tap the period question mark one, two, three key to access the numbers keyboard. Here you'll find all of the numbers as well as a few more of the commonly used symbols. To access the rest of the symbols, tap the pound plus equals key. 
Tap the ABC key to switch back to the letters keyboard. Tap either arrow before typing a letter to capitalize the letter. The first word of each sentence will automatically be capitalized. Double tap Most and up arrow time, to you turn on gotta, caps you lock. Gotta <laughs> tap an arrow again to turn caps lock off. We all make mistakes, but luckily touchscreen keyboards are very forgiving. Misspelled words are often autocorrected as you type. Sometimes the keyboard suggests a word that you don't want to use. When this happens, simply tap the suggested word to use the word you've typed. Now press the home button to return to the home screen. Yep, so again, that was just a quick overview of just some, you know, some basic keys and some basic ideas on using your um, iPad keyboard. Um, next up, um, I'm going to put a link in the chat as well. Um, I found this website um, that did a really great job of just explaining um, just generally and pretty easily on um, how to utilize your keyboard and um, some different options. So, you know, I hope you can um, all utilize this resource um, and just go over uh, it maybe over the long weekend to, you know, really um, get some practice in in utilizing your um, iPad keyboard. So um, we're going to go through this, um, you know, article for the rest of today's session. And while I put it in the chat as well. So you'll be able to access it too. Just make sure you open the link um, um, before the meeting ends if you'd like to use it, okay? Um, so using the keyboard, the iPad is a built-in virtual keyboard that you can use to input text on your device. You know, you can purchase an external keyboard, but you know, the virtual keyboard has everything that you need, you know, and, including a lot of convenient shortcuts. So of course the keyboard, you know, only appears when you're about to type something in a text field, right? It doesn't appear all the time. If it, if it appeared all the time, there would be no space for anything else, right? <laughs> so only when you're about to type something in, so like you see it only came up because I'm in notes, right? Um, so when you have it up, again, you have these different keys that are available to you. So that's what we'll be going over. So um, I think one really great feature of this website, it actually has little um, notes about each and every little thing you can utilize when typing and it gives a description. So we're <coughs> kind of go, we're kind of go, uh, we're gonna go counter clockwise a little bit. So I'll start at the top and go counterclockwise. So the first thing you should realize is this yellow line right here, right? When you're about to type this yellow line, it's called the cursor, okay? So the cursor indicates where the text will appear. So if I go back to my notes and you, you guys see where the cursor is at, right? It's two lines below where it says talk to you later. If I tap and move the cursor, that's where I'm about to type, right? So again, you tap where you wanna type, right? And wherever you tap, you'll see the cursor and that's where it is. So you can use the, you know, like in the video, so you can use the return key, you can use the backspace to move the cursor if you want. But you, um, when you're typing something, just make sure to look to see where the cursor is so you know you're typing in the right place, okay? You know, if you're filling in an application, make sure your cursor, if you're writing your first name, make sure it's not in the last name section and vice versa, okay? So that is the cursor. Um, the next one is, uh, of course, these letter keys, right? <laughs> so just like the video said, we have 26 different letters um, on the keyboard, which, you know, because there are 26 letters in the alphabet. So um, it's styled as a QWERTY keyboard, you know, because there's Q-W-E-R-T-Y at the top left. So if you ever need Q-W-E-R-T-Y, just think top left corner of the screen. And again, the more that you use your keyboard, um, the more that you'll, you know, just internally remember where uh, each of the keys are. So um, I've been using a computer or a keyboard for almost uh, 20 years now. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's still uh, a work in progress. 
because just learning how to maneuver, you know, and, and think of where the keys are, you know, it's, it's still, you know, takes a little bit of effort, which is okay, because I, you know, really learn how to type efficiently and um, to be able to, you know, do more in, in less time. Um, so once you really internalize this keyboard, it uh, really helps out. The next button we'll go over is these up arrows, right? And you notice on the iPad keyboard, there are two of them. So th this, again, the shift key, when you tap it, you can insert a capital letter or an alternate character. You can also double tap the shift key twice to turn on caps lock. So yes, there is a caps lock feature on your iPad keyboard, but it's not an actual button. It's itself on there. So yes, um, when I hit the shift key, so you notice if I go to a new line, it's automatically, uh, you know, used. So, but if I want, don't want a capital letter for whatever reason, I can just tap on it again. And you see it switches the letters back to lowercase. So if the letters on the keyboard are uppercase, you know, you're about to type an uppercase letter. And if the key letters are lowercase, then, you know, you're about to type a lowercase letter. Okay. So again, uppercase, I can do an A, I can do lower A, hit the shift, big A, little a. And you see, once you type that capital letter, it automatically goes back to lowercase. So if you wanted to, to capital lock or caps lock, you double tap. So again, two taps in succession to, to make it caps lock. So look, A, B, C, all of my letters are capital. So no matter how many times I type, it is all capital, right? So of course, normally, you know, if you're typing an email at someone, you don't want to write in all caps because it, it definitely looks like, you know, um, you know, you're not yelling at the individual, but it just gives that energy. So, you know, just keep that in mind. So if you ever want to turn off the caps lock, you just tap on the shift key again. So you tap it once for the uh, uppercase letter, or you notice at the bottom right of the keyboard, you have the comma and the period, right? So right now it's a comma and a period, but if I hit the shift key, now it, it's a exclamation and a question mark. So that's how you access those alternate characters. So right now it's a, again, a, a comma and a period, but if I hit the shift key, it's an exclamation and a question mark, okay? So you can do one uppercase letter, many uppercase letters, or you can access a special character, okay? So that is the shift key. Um, next up, of course, is the number and special characters key. So this period, question mark, one, two, three. When I tap on it, you get access, look, to the numbers and some characters, like, you know, the at sign, the hashtag, the dollar sign, the, uh, the and symbol, the asterisk two parentheses, uh, um, an apostrophe. Um, you have a percent symbol down here, a dash, a plus, an equal sign, a forward slash, um, a semicolon, a colon, all of these different characters. So, you know, if you ever need any of those characters, those are right here on the keyboard, okay? And if you notice, you can get access to even more. You see on the either side, you have the hashtag plus equal sign, and look, even more characters. So more currencies like the euro or yen, um, you can get a, uh, an underscore uh, brackets if you need them, these curly brackets, uh, three dots, like a dot, dot, dot. <laughs> um, these, uh, you know, look, they look like croc got crocodiles, right? And um, yeah, so that's how you can access the different special characters by hitting this one, two, three, and utilizing the hashtag plus equal sign. So all these different characters you can quickly access just by hitting these buttons here on the side, okay? The next button is the emoji keyboard. So again, one of the most fun emojis that are uh, keys that you can utilize is this emoji keyboard. So I have, because I have that Spanish keyboard that I showed you all earlier, you know, usually you would see that it, it has like a smiley face right there, but I have a globe right here, but it's just this area. So look, any emoji, these are most of my recently used ones. They have smileys and people, right? They have 
all different kind of folks here and with shoes and people and animals, you know, weather, fruit, drinks. So if you look at the daily emails, I try to add an emoji next to each title, you know, just to have a little more fun, right? So I hope you all enjoy that. But look, travel in places, objects. Look, look at the world is your oyster, right? Hearts, symbols, SOS. Z, 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 like the sleep symbol, <laughs> um, different, you know, anything. Look at all that, even all the flags. If you notice for the travel edition, I always have the flag of the country that we're visiting. So look at that. It's amazing, right? So you're just utilizing this emoji keyboard. You can add any of these different emojis. One thing that I went over, which I think is so important, is that Apple recently had added different skin tones for emojis. And again, representation matters, right? So let's say, you know, they're, they're all yellow right now, but you know, not everyone is one color. So if you wanna access the other skin tones, you can like, let's say I hold on to her and look, I just drag my finger to the one that I would like. So you can, you know, still have the yellow one, <laughs> but you can choose any one that you would like just by holding, and you see it actually changes it on the keyboard for you and you can always switch it, right? So again, for, you know, some, some, a lot of them actually, if you hold onto the, onto the particular emoji, you can then access those, you know, again, those different skin tones and it's uh, so important, right? And representation really matters. So look at that. <laughs> um, Last thing on the emoji keyboard, you can even search for emojis. You see at the bottom left hand side of the keyboard, you see that magnifying glass? Look what happens. If I do it, look, I type in party. Look, party emojis. <laughs> if I type in beach, beach emojis, right? Um, if I type in city, look at that, different city emojis. Uh, if I type in heart, look at that, isn't that so neat? And then you can uh, then tap on the result that you want. So here in um, the emojis section, you can search for different emojis, um, change how they appear, and also search for them um, as well. So I hope that was useful as well. Um, the next key over is, a, yeah, of course, the dictation key. We just said went over it. So you can use your voice um, if you would like to uh, enter text on your iPad. So the next button over, of course, is a space bar. Um, you can tap the space bar to add a space. You can double tap the space bar at the end of a sentence to automatically end with the period. So again, let's say I'm writing, this is Alex. If I wanted to normally type this, um, I would have to hit the period and then hit a space. But how... Um, you know, that could be a lot better, right? <laughs> so instead, I'm gonna write, how are you? Or, well, you know, this is Alex. Today is one twelve, right? And then instead of hitting the period and then the space bar, I'm gonna double tap the space bar and look what it did. It um, added a period and a space just for you. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Today is one twelve. Have a good day. And then double tap the space bar. Look at that, a space and a period. How easy is that? Um, the next button we're gonna go over, we have two more, is this keyboard button, the hide keyboard button. So again, if you just wanna see like your whole work, because the keyboard does take up quite a bit of space on the screen, you can hit the hide keyboard button at the bottom right. And look at that. All this stuff. Right here, I can see. Last but not least, on the keyboard above the return key, the enter key, is the backspace key. Okay, tap the backspace key to erase the character to the left of the cursor. So let's go up here, right? I can tap the delete key and it deletes it one to the left, right? It just keeps deleting. But if I hold the delete key, look what happens. It's a lot faster, right? So you can either tap 
and delete, you know, if you just need one or two, or you can hold it to delete entire phrases if you want to, okay? So that is the uh, the backspace key. Um, so that's some of the main, and I hope that, again, that was helpful, um, keys to utilize on your device. Um, just some other features of the keyboard, there are suggestions. So it uh, the iPad will offer suggestions for certain words um, as you type, right? So if I am typing, um, let's see, H-E-L-L, Oh, this, and you notice I wrote T-H-I, right? I didn't write the S yet because the S is in gray. If I hit the space bar, look at that. It automatically typed it in. So this is, oops, I don't know why I did that. This is a great, and you see I just wrote G-R, and then I can hit the space bar and continue typing, day. So I, I just wrote D, right? And then it says, it already says the AY for me. So I hit the space bar and wow, it just added that word for me. So, you know, they have different suggestions, right? Um, in addition to the autocorrect. So if you, uh, the iPad will correct commonly misspelled words automatically. So if I write T-E-H, as it said, instead of T-H-E, right? Look at that. All I did was hit the space and go to the next word and it fixed it for me. How amazing. So again, T-E-H. So it doesn't do it the second time. So maybe, uh, hmm. let me, there, T-H. So there is spelled T-H-E-I-R, but I'm going to spell it wrong on purpose, T-H-I-E-R. So sometimes it doesn't do it. It has to, I guess it's supposed to be common, but as you can see, when you had written it, The actual correction, it says T-H-E-I-R right here on top of the keyboard. So sometimes you'll see it there, but you'll see that it will give like a red underlined um, thing on the word if you uh, have maybe had misspelled something. Okay. Um, one cool thing with um, when you're in the notes or when you're typing, if you want to move the cursor, instead of tapping, and selecting where you want to go. You can hold the cursor and move it to your desired location. So I'm gonna hold the cursor and look, I'm gonna drag it to where I want it to go. And you see, you can be really specific. If I wanted, wanted to write in between AL and EX, I could do that. Can I tap and hold? I can put my character, my cursor there and just, you know, type. <laughs> And then I can also, again, just hold it and drag it to the exact spot that I want to put it at, okay? So that's a one great feature that you can do. Um, and just to mention, uh, you know, if you want to copy and select text, let's say um, you are reading an article. So let's go to um, the, the news app. Okay, so I'm going to go to my news app. Let's say I'm there. And I am reading an article today. Let's see, sports. Let's say I was reading something about sports. And then let me read uh, this article on the Patriots. <laughs> so I uh, read this article. And let's say I wanted maybe this paragraph right here. So if you want to select text, um, on your iPad, when you're uh, reading it, like on an app, you hold where you want to put to select, right? And you see these selection handles, these little circles on each side. I can drag the circles to where I want to copy it. And you see at the top, the option says copy. So I can hit copy, go to my notes. First, I have to place my cursor where I want it to go. And then I tap on the cursor and I'll get this option to come up. I hit paste and look at that. I just pasted the information from um, that article to my notes in case I ever needed it later. So just wanted to show you all that. We go a little more in depth on uh, module five, uh, but I just wanted to show you all that as well. Um, 
Yep, screen orientation. Uh, just make sure if you have the keyboard up, you notice if your iPad is horizontal, it takes up this space. If your iPad is vertical, it takes up a little less space. So uh, bigger, more space, smaller, a little smaller, less space, okay? Um, yeah, alternate characters. If you uh, are on the keyboard on your iPad, and let's say you wanted a, an E with an accent. So what you have to do is hold the character that you want. So E, I hold and look at that. I get these different options. I just drag my finger. Again, I didn't let go to the result that I want. So I want the E with the accents. I want the E with the two dots. I want the E with the backwards accent. Um, I want C with an accent. I want the I with an accent, um, et cetera. So look at that all the different characters. So if you ever needed, again, a, an alternate letter, like an N with an accent, or it even works with the, with the, with the characters too. So like in uh, the and sign, I can do that one. The uh, dollar sign, I can automatically go to yen. All of these different options. So it's just finding about which ones work for you, right? So not all of them have it, but it's just uh, lots of fun. And look, one cool trick is if you hold and drag these, you know, you see above each letter is a kind of a gray letter. If I hold it and drag it down, like the letter Q, look, I get one, two, three, four, A, like at symbol. So if I just drag my finger down on the key, I can get the letter, the gray letter above it. So V, I can get an equal sign. C, I can get the dash. R, I can get the number four. So I just really just kind of learned that looking at it and just trying it out. So <laughs> um, that's, that's you know, a pretty cool feature. So I don't have to go to the numbers and hit nine. I can just drag the letter O down and get the nine as well. So, um, so yeah keyboard settings and uh well that is that's it folks for uh <laughs> um for the ipad keyboard for today um once i have my screen back up i'm gonna um pull up our questions and we'll have our question and answer and demonstration time um but i hope you all uh enjoyed um learning more about the keyboard which you know is one of the most essential um, features of using your iPad because that's how you're able to type, create, send emails, compose messages, um, play games, uh, ex etc. So it's uh, you know quite an important feature to utilize, and um, I really appreciate all of your participation, and I hope you learn something new today. So for our overview and our discussion. Um, I have some questions for you all. So what is one new fact that you learned today? Um, what do you use the keyboard for most on your iPad? Uh, what is your favorite keyboard button or function? And how do you think uh, proficient typing can have a positive impact uh, on your life? Um, so I love if you could uh, raise your hand and um, answer one of these, or you know, if you have a question, that I can also assist with that um, as well. Uh, thank you, Bridget. Uh, <laughs> usually I have the day uh, for it. So today is actually National Hot Tea Day, but I wanted to show you all this cool little background that I found. So um, thank you. <laughs> um, first up is uh, Diane. How are you? Good morning. This is what puzzles me because I use the um uh, uh keyboard a lot. But mm -hmm. when I'm but when I'm messaging my son in the morning, mm -hmm. I talk in the microphone. Mm -hmm. And I find what I find is I say some words, but the words come out differently. And I think it's my because it's my speech. And I go back, delete it. Like sometimes I say, uh -huh. good, mor 
good morning, son. And but it come out sun like the sun up in the sky. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I I can I can definitely imagine that. And sometimes, you know, it 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 can be it's not a hundred percent perfect. So um when when you do use the dictation, I would just try to kind of um not you know enunciate just a little bit more, you know, so that way it could it could be as accurate as possible. And you know, sometimes you will have to go back and make an edit. So you know, when it when it when you had said that, it, it recognized the word was morning before, I guess maybe, and it maybe thought you were talking about the sun, but not your sun, right? Right. <laughs> so right. I would try to say, um, well, let me let me try that. Let me see. Let me see if it does it for me on my phone. So. Let me say this. Uh, good morning, son. And it did it. It did. It did exactly what she said. It said son, like S U N. So it got the oh. good morning part right. But you right. know that, what you do again. I'll, I'm on my phone, so same thing. All I do is just hit the backspace twice, and then I replace. Yes. You know, a win. So, but hey, it's this better to do, you know, not better, but it, it may have been easier to have the good morning already, you know, at least that was right. And then you could just edit the uh, the end part, right? Right. And, and sometimes instead of sun, it comes up good morning, Sean. And I don't oh. understand <laughs> how it would come up Sean when I said sun. But um, what I, basically what I wanted to know is, when I'm talking on the iPad, say for instance, I want to write a, a letter. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm talking on the iPad. How can you save that letter? How can you just save that letter to a folder and go back to it next time? Well, um, well, I, well, we, well we probably uh, ain't got there yet. I just. We probably ain't got there yet. I just wondered. That's all. Oh well, yes, Diane. Um, well, I, I, I think you may be overthinking that a little bit because if you're just, if you're asking where I can create a document and edit it later, you know, all over December we talked about, you know, notes and pages. So right. you know, that's you know, use use those apps and they'll automatically be in those apps and then. You know, we had one over like how you could, you know, save them and send them to others if you want to. So, you what? know, just like I utilized today, you can do notes, you can do pages um, oh, okay. or any other different apps that are on your iPad. You know, that's how you do type it up on your device because, uh, right. you know, I, you, uh, does that make sense? Yeah, that 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 do make sense. But, but sometimes, well, when I'm talking on uh Yes, it does make sense. Thank you. No problem, Diane. Just, you know, whenever you can utilize the keyboard and type things in, you can also utilize the dictation as well. So uh, just keep that in mind, okay? Okay, thank you. No <laughs> problem. Um, next up is uh, Miss Wilda. And again, any other questions that you yes, have? Yes, good morning. Please good raise morning. your hand. Hi, good morning, Ms. Wilda, what? how are you? Good, good. I am... I'm all this time, I didn't realize those numbers was over the letters. So I have learned today that all I have to do is slide down. I don't have to go to the numbers key. Mm -hmm. I just learned that just now. Me, me <laughs> too, Miss Wilda. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Alice, you go so fast. I don't know. I'm just, I guess I'm old and uh, 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 I'm, I'm picking up a lot, but you go awful fast, man, I tell you. So, but I did learn that today. And my favorite key, uh, 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 um, key is the uh, emoji key you know that uh, i have that world <laughs> that world sign you touch that mm -hmm. world sign and all kind of stuff come up so up. everything comes up yes mm -hmm. indeed so that's my favorite one uh that's it thank you so much for, for um uh, uh, uh talking thank you oh no problem miss welda and i can definitely understand how it may be a lot because you know there are you know some deeper levels on the keyboard um, but that's why, you know, um, anything in specific, you know, just I would have, you know, my little notes to the side and then uh, that way you can write things down and that way you can, you know, do your research and, um, you know, just just practice it. So anything that, you know, you want to go over yourself, you know, that's that's what I would do. And uh, 
But um, I'm glad you learned that. I just literally learned how to do that just by looking at it, right? And just trying things out. And that's what I want all of you all to do as well, is to just try. And when you put in a little effort, it really does help out, you know? Is once once you put your foot in the foot in the, uh, the car or the vehicle, you know, you're already halfway there, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, thank you so much. Uh, next up is uh, Brenda. Hi, Brenda, how are you? I'm good, Alex. I'm doing fine. How you doing? Well. Good, good. Well, <laughs> I just want to say that uh, my favorite key, well, I don't use the keyboard. I try not to use it on the iPad because it's so tiny. But, you know, since I've got the uh, external keyboard, I use that quite a bit. And, um, you know, on my computer, I use my keyboard a lot. And my favorite function on there is the print function. You know, where you hit the control and the P and it'll print whatever I need, you know, whatever document I'm trying to print. And the thing that I learned new was I didn't know that I didn't know the name of the keys, the modified keys. I didn't know that was the name of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, I never knew. So, <laughs> but yeah, that that's my favorite function. And I like the emojis as well. So. Yeah. Mm. Oh yes. You know, utilizing, <laughs> you know, any it, just any keyboard, you know, it helps out with, you know, um, you know, your dexterity, you know, it's keeping oh, your yeah. mind and your body active because when you type, no matter what you're doing, you know, using your hands, you're using your brain, you're using your right. eyes, you know, you're 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 using all and that helps with, you know, again, retention and dexterity, you know, you know, keeping everything yeah. sharp. So And you, you know, know another thing too, Alex, when I I took typing in, in high school and mm -hmm. they didn't have all these functions on there. All they had was the tab, the return, and you know, <laughs> it was a manual typewriter where we had to yes. swing the <laughs> Yes. And and you saw remember that you didn't you when you when you saw those videos, wasn't that kind of amazing how the old keyboards used to look? Yes. And kind of how, oh my gosh, like how uh well not unintuitive because you gotta start from somewhere, but just nowadays, who I wouldn't even I you know, it would take me a long time just to learn how to use those. But yeah, you know, that's why we're grateful for what we have now, you know. It's yeah. pretty much letters, numbers, characters, and some other keys here and there to help with that. So yeah, you know, if you think of something as not as big as you may think of it as to, to be, it's easier to tackle and you'll right. you know be more likely to get into it because you know when I learned about the keyboard I was like oh this is so cool <laughs> yeah yeah we had to learn the keyboard too where the keys were and that that left-handed uh, uh keyboard I was trying to figure out where the home row is where where do you oh, put your, yeah. put your hands it's, yep. <laughs> that was weird I, I mean it I know really right weird. <laughs> it just looked I don't know just just didn't look right so yeah, but yeah yeah but hey that you know that they they well some people may have needed that so <laughs> yeah that's true. well you know that i guess you know when you know when something's new you just want to try things out and see what works so you know i'm, I'm glad what we have now what we have now today me too if we didn't if we didn't ooh, I, I don't know where it would be at <laughs> yeah technology has come a long way so <laughs> yes it has <laughs> But that was good. That was a good presentation. Oh, well, thank you so much, Brenda. And let sure. us know if you need anything else, okay? Okay, I will. All right. Um, last up for today um, is Miss Helen. How are you? Good morning. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. I hope you enjoyed today. Yes, I did. Uh, I have uh, the new thing that I uh, learned were things that other people has mentioned the names of the keys in the control mm -hmm. on the typewriter and the um, other one was touching the key with the number and getting the uppercase but I have a question mm -hmm. oftentimes I've listened to uh, oral presentation and uh, even in your program is there any way on the keyboard that I can stop the presentation for a pause? Um, I'm, just I'm like you, sure. you, I'm... you're speaking. Uh, just like uh, Martin Luther King yesterday, and there was an oral presentation, 
and I wanted to copy something down. I have a shaking disease and I, I'm slow. Is there any way I can pause it long enough for me to copy it down? I've tried taking the picture that you had suggested where you hit the control and the, um, well, the two keys. I know the two keys. Um, are you talking but, about a screenshot, Miss Helen? It, in this, yeah, uh, the screen, screenshot. It, it's the home I button and the power button. So yes, I can do that. And the power I can button do, at the same time. I can um, do that now. But I would mm -hmm. like to just pause the screen for for my oral presentation. Oh yeah, yes, Miss Helen. So unfortunately, Zoom is a, it's these are these sessions are live, so there's no way for me to pause unless I actually pause myself in the session. So what I recommend you do is that, um, and you know, in our daily emails, you can access our YouTube channels by hitting our logo, and that way you can view these sessions afterwards if you would like. And then you're able to pause the video if you need to, or rewind, or go back if you would okay. like. So, but for Zoom, Thank no, you these, very are much. Live, these are live sessions. So I wish you could right. in a way, but uh, that's what I recommend. All right. Thank you very much. Oh, no problem, Miss Helen. I'm glad you learned something new today, and you have a good day. Every okay? day, every day, every day, I learn something new. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> So uh, again, today, uh, well, thank you so much for coming on to our dance session today and learning how to uh, utilize um, your iPad keyboard some more. And um, I hope you all enjoy. Today we have our travel edition of the lunch call. We'll be taking a trip to Turkey at 12 p.m. with Lou. So uh, make sure you all come on for that. And then um, at 1.30 p.m. today, we'll be covering um, email on your iPad. So how to utilize email, how to send emails, how to reply or forward on email and how to add attachments. So you can send pictures and files to wh uh, whoever you need to. So um, lots of great features uh, um, today and presentations. And it was a pleasure to work with you all today. Um, and thanks so much for attending.